Um, and then some of these are some strange tradition that we don't have any source for, like for example, there's the, I believe it's in Matthew, there's the story that is most biblical scholars say is, can't have been original, which is the story about the woman, the prostitute being stoned to death. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that was one of the, I believe it was the one that gives, for he who is without sin cast the first stone. Um, by looking back on earlier versions of the Bible, they now, biblical scholars say that this was large, large, this was definitely an addition to the text, it was not part of the original text. So, yeah, Sorry, um, go ahead. I just want to uh, say we, we also have a voicemail line, if we could bring that up again real quick, we had it up a little bit earlier. Um, we may be closer to the end of the show where we can't actually do um, any more live calls, but we have a voicemail line. <laughs> and it's 206-420-0997. Leave us a call, and we can definitely uh, address your points. Um, we can even play the call over the air next time. Definitely. Right. So I, the last thing I had written down here, because there was there's so much more that I could go through here. I mean, the, the points that he, that Ehrman wants to get across that I think are the most important is that, one, that the Bible as an inerrant uh, text it can't be true because it contains too many of its own. It, it's too self-contradictory in, in if it's... If it's supposed to be a history, a literal history, and that too, each author speaks for himself. Each book of each book of the Synoptic Gospels, as well as each book of the rest of the New Testament, is done by a different author for a different community, and it wants to tell the same story but tell it differently. And thirdly, the most important is that uh, looking at it from a historical perspective, these can't be dis disinterested historical accounts because each person taking these traditions and writing them down and carrying them forward has an agenda for doing so, and it largely, since these were written for various communities, these are largely uh, ways to preserve the tradition, but as well as to interpret the tradition to help resolve some of the issues that the communities themselves might be having. It's a, it's a way of selling it to a certain group. It's kind of like how Christianity in Europe adopted a lot of the pagan like Correct. traditions from Saturnalia to convert people. Correct. And, and I think uh, uh, the, the interesting part about here is that um, what we do find in, in to combat this sort of the weird errors between the inconsistencies between these stories and these apologetics, which is this whole field of trying to find a way to reconcile the fact that, say, Jesus died before Passover and after Passover, and you called it the, the no prize for Jesus. Right. The, the general gist, if you're not familiar with what a no prize is, Marvel Comics used to do this thing where if a reader would call in and find a way to rationalize a continuity error, let's just say Spider-Man's eating a Reuben sandwich and some old issue, he said he hated Reuben sandwiches, and they find some, they make some excuse for why this still fits. It's, it's different in a lot of ways from Marvel Comics, simply because nobody who's coming up with these excuses really thinks Spider-Man is real. Um, the difference here is that, that, really, and Sam put this out too, is apologetics largely exists not to try to convince other people of uh, continuity errors, but largely to combat doubt within oneself. Um, largely, it's, it's, it's one of the most uh, dishonest things I've seen, because the reasons they give for why other people should believe these things, even with the contradictions, aren't the reasons they believe. So Yeah, uh, and, and so apologetics can be distasteful to a lot of people and some fun to bandy around for us, but the, I guess to conclude here of where we're we're taking, I'm sort of taking this analysis from is not that I really care about what is historically true and untrue. I mean, I, I do care. I mean, I mean, I, I, let's just put it this way. It doesn't matter to me whether or not Jesus existed or didn't exist. That what, what matters is the fact that there are people, there are people that are credulous enough to believe that all the things that the Bible says are true. Um, what our goal here is to, what our goal I think here should be to do is to, um, Continue to oh shoot we got a call yeah. that, so sorry anyways um, if the Bible is the Bible is awesome you should read it <laughs> not not really true though um, we are going to be meeting in just a short while at the Northgate Azteca join us for some food some fun conversation we continue this conversation soon uh, we do want to thank you here at Ask an Atheist uh, we'll be here next Sunday to discuss all sorts of topics come down have a beer with us see you next week thanks guys bye bye. <laughs>